What is going on everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Redneck Industry Channel. And this is like my fifth time trying to record this freaking video. Um, YouTube and my camera is really uh, messing around on me right now. So we're just going to jump right into it. I'm not even going to do an intro or anything. We're just going to do one straight take right through. So let's jump into it. So the first and most important thing you are going to want in order to start trapping is this. And if you can't read my messy handwriting, that is permission to trap land. Okay, um, that's the most important thing over any type of set, any type of trap, anything. You always have to have permission to trap. You always have to be going by your local laws, guidelines, um, and making sure that you're trapping humanely, dispatching humanely, and uh, stuff like that. So the second thing you're going to want is a good knife. Okay, so this is a Valor stainless steel knife. I don't know if you guys can see that. Okay, really good knife, nice big handle, get a really nice good grip. Um, you'll see this in a second again as well. Um, now the next thing you're gonna want is sharpening blocks. So that's to keep your knife nice and sharp. Um, this is a coarse uh, block and this is the fine block. Now this is kind of a personal preference specific but uh, I like to have an X-Acto knife because I like to be doing, that's how I like to skin my animals. So now for the tools, you're gonna want an array of pliers and wire cutters. So I have wire cutters right here. I have adjustable pliers right here. I'm sure you guys all know what adjustable pliers do. That's if you gotta make corrections on um, your trap hands or what have you. And I have a set of pliers and wire snips. So the next thing that I have is I have my trapping hammer, which I cut the claw off. It was like down to here and I uh, made it so it's semi flush or semi um, straight. Um, so that's for making your trap beds, banging in stakes. Now the most important thing you're doing trapping footholds. So you're gonna want a dirt hole punch. So I just cut that off right there, made that a dirt hole punch. So you put it through the dirt, I know it looks weird. Twist, pull out, and bang it off. Get the dirt out of there. Next thing you're gonna want is a good screwdriver. That's also if you need to make minor adjustments to your pan. Now, if you're trapping with con bears, this is trap specific. Okay, so this is uh, setters. So if you're trapping with a 110 con bear, like such, you, you will not need the setters because I'm sure anybody is capable of um, setting the trap like, like that. Make sure your dog's lined up with your trigger wire. Now, with the setters, is basically, uh, pretend my finger's the setter, so you wanna squeeze that spring. Squeeze that spring, okay? But the setters you'd be using, um, or the, the trap you'd be using the setters on is one of these. This is a Duke uh, 220 body grip trap. So it's a double spring. So you want to set your setters here, here, and pinch down, obviously, simultaneously. And then you put your safety over your, your latch while your setters are still on there. You lock your trap up nice and safe. So next thing you're going to want to do, uh, excuse me, is to have some kind of steak. So this is just a regular steak, washer on top. Um, you want a swivel or something like this. Uh, to connect your trap to just bang that into the dirt. I have uh, little fins on there kind of I like to twist the trap So I put it down like this. I don't know if you guys can see that so it goes down the hole like this I like to twist it so the hole it has a hard time coming up that hole Okay Now the next thing and uh, another common thing that I use is chain Okay, so I take my trap. This is an old leaf spring or uh, not leaf spring. Excuse me um, uh Long spring, I had a brain fart, long spring um, foothold trap. So what I like to do is I like to take one, um, I like to have two carabiners on the trap or on the chain, like that, okay? And then I like to attach one carabiner to the ring on the trap. And this goes with any foothold trap, um, whether it be coil trap or uh, coil spring traps or uh, long springs, I trap with both. And then I like to so let's say my arm is a tree. 
wrap it around the tree like hold on i'll show you in a second just got to get it around the, the chain there like that so you clip it around a tree and then pull tight that trap's not or that uh, chain's not going anywhere okay and then you see you got your lots of room for that animal to swing around lots of tons of room very humane way to do it um gives them lots of room to lay down or do whatever it really wants to do okay now another uh uh way of staking traps down is um sorry excuse me um another way of staking traps down is a dirt anchor which i don't really like so you have a nut it's attached there you drive um this dirt hanker let's pretend this is a piece of steel piece of steel uh, round bar drive that down with the nut on there with a piece of cable pull up on that cable sits like that it does not come out of the ground okay now i'm going to give you a little bit of an example of different traps so this is the long spring um trap that's set you want to have your long spring facing the dog so that this uh one back jaw sits flush with the pan okay like i said before this is a uh, double uh, spring conibear or body grip trap. And this right here is a 110 conibear. So this is a 220 compared to a 110. So you would use this trap for muskrat, mink, um, uh, rabbit if it's legal in your area, things like that, smaller animals, squirrels too as well. You would use this for raccoons, beavers, uh, that kind of thing along that line. Um, now you guys can go check out my um, video on coon trapping. I'll put that at the end of the, the video here. Um, but the next thing we're going to get into is once you're done with the animal, you uh, have it out of the trap, you dispatched it, whatever it may be, is you're going to want um, things for flushing. So I have my, the, my knife. I use this as a flushing knife. And you can also go check out um, my how to flush a coon uh, hide video. And you're going to want a flushing board, okay? So this is a flushing board. You, you slide the, the tube of the, the hide down there, um, hide side out, and you flush down the coon or whatever you may have. I have a smaller one here as well for smaller animals. This one's got a bit of th thickness to it, okay? Now... The last and almost second most important thing is you want to have a ways or a meaning of, um, or a means, excuse me, of dispatching an animal. So I have this, uh, it's a 22 long rifle, uh, Winchester model 490. I've done a review on it. Um, also you can go check that video out as well. It is unloaded as you can see. Um, now that's, that's uh, another big important part of trapping, whether it be um, trapping coons with a foothold or uh, anything up to coyotes, okay? Um, now, that's a little bit different with uh, body grip traps. If you're trapping specifically with body grip traps, the likelihood that you're gonna need a firearm if you use the right size trap um, in the right spot with the right set, you will not need that. Okay, this is a body grip trap. This is a kill trap. So, um, I'll show you with this uh, two or this one ten. It's a bit safer. So you set your trap. So all you got to do is squeeze this. Uh, put these two um, the jaws up. Take your dog, flip it over, put it in the notch. Move your hand out of the way safely. Um, so I'll set this off with this piece of cardboard. So the animal will walk through setting the trap off and you can see that's how it would kind of grip the animal obviously the animal would probably have it most of its body through the trap or at least its head is kind of what you're aiming for um and that's what uh the the body grip traps or the kill traps do okay um another thing too with the fleshing i kind of should have touched on this before now if you want to uh, if you want to tan hides for um personal use um to hang up on the wall maybe um, something like that. You're going to want uh, a tanning formula. So this is Deer Hunter and Trapper's tanning formula. Um, it comes from 
um, Cum uh, Cumberland Trapper Supply. Okay, this is, I don't know if you guys can see that or not. Um, the website is not focusing, but it is www, excuse me, dot hand, uh, hide tanning formula dot com. Again, that is www dot hide tanning formula dot com. Excuse me. I'm not affiliated with them at all. I just really like their product and I'll show you what I mean by tanning. So this is a possum that I got and tanned up so that that inside is all tanned up. It is uh, preserve the hide, preserve the fur, it doesn't rip out. Um, that'd be kind of funny if I just pulled a fistful of fur off, eh? Um, now I'll show you another example of tanning hides, which might be a little bit of a better example. Um, this is a my biggest raccoon that I ever got. I shot this raccoon, actually, I did not trap it. Um, I, I trimmed off all the, the bad fur and just kept the good, nice, thick stuff. Now, I gotta take a wire wheel to this, but this is what it looks like. See how it's all kind of leathery? So what you wanna do to do that is you wanna pull the skin once it's all trapped and dry, or um, uh, tan, excuse me, and dried. You wanna pull the skin and uh, get it so it looks like that white color right there. I still gotta work on the top a bit, and then I'm gonna wire wheel it down so it's nice and um, soft to the touch. Now, another thing too, which kind of goes along with the, the, the fleshing, um, but this is more oriented towards skinning, um, is you want a means like a skinning gimbal or something. So I take this, um, you usually hang deer on this, but I just um, cut the tendon, uh, mostly on a raccoon, uh, hang it from the tendon, um, hang it from my roof in my shop here and skin down from that. Um, but you could do it on the ground, it doesn't really matter. Um, now the last thing you're going to want, and this ties in with trapping is bait. Okay. Now, depending on what you're trapping, uh, the bait can be different from each, each animal. Now I make my own bait because that's what I enjoy doing and it's a lot cheaper for me. So this is a bag of peanut butter, which I use for squirrel. Um, this is an apple, uh, for muskrat and rabbit, just... Uh, muskrat don't necessarily like apple. They are vegetarian, but, uh, you see that they see the green and they think, um, well, let's check that out. And I put that right on the trigger wire. Same with the peanut butter. I usually take marshmallows as well for the squirrels. Um, but you put it right on the trigger wire. Um, if you just do an open set, if you're doing a, um, like a set on a muskrat hut, um, you don't necessarily need one of them because you're hoping that they'll just run right through it. Um, but yeah, a lot of people too, also, they put a little piece of flagging tape, a little piece of orange flagging tape on their, their, um, trap as well, which, uh, carrots also work or muskrat. That is, uh, animal spe specific, excuse me. So as you can see in my, uh, coon trapping video as well is coons love tuna. So just take your screwdriver, puncture the, that lid there. Get it all nice and caked up over the trap. Stick that in the back of the bucket. Set your uh, 220 here. And uh, you're good to go for that. Now, if you want to see that more in depth, like I said, go check out my coon trapping video. Um, but yeah, so my coyote bait. Um, for a, This is a dirt hole set, not a step down or anything like that. This is ground up squirrel and raccoon. And it, yes, it looks like it's gone bad because it has gone bad and I keep it in a nice tight Ziploc bag and keep it in my trapping bag. But that is what you want. You want a, you want a, um, a really, really foul smelling wheat, meat, excuse me, because um, coyotes are scavengers. So they kind of, so the dirt holes here, your traps here, they'll walk up, kind of investigate the trap or the, the, the bait and the scent. And uh, what you're hoping for is uh, for a um, foot catch is obviously, um, now, you, you can get a raccoon that spoils a good set, and what I mean by that is you could have a perfect, perfect set, um, a dirt hole set, and a raccoon could come by, you know, non-target catches, um, and set off that uh, trap, um, but that's fine. That would be a non-target catch, so you just um, use a trap or a, a catch pole, which I do not have, which is basically a hollow tube with um, wire looped around it and it'd be like kind of like a noose you just pull the the wire through the top 
uh, around the animal's neck. It doesn't choke them out or anything, but it uh, kind of holds them back so you can get them out of the trap. Now, the last thing I use is fur. So this is squirrel and rabbit fur. You place that over the top of the um, bait so they kind of can, that, that's kind of a visual, a visual stimulant to them. They look at that and they say, oh, fur, something must have dug there to see the dirt hole. Well, something must have buried it there. They go up to investigate and they smell the, the uh, bait that you put in there. Um, and like I said, hopefully they get caught. Um, but that's pretty much it for this video. Sorry, it was kind of a rushed video. If you guys want to see a more in-depth video, please let me know. It is four in the morning and I've been trying to record this a countless amount of times. So my patience were a little bit thin with my camera. Um, but yeah, uh, I hope you guys are staying healthy and safe during these crazy, crazy times. Thank you very, very much for watching. I appreciate every single view, every single comment, and every single like, every single subscribe, all that stuff. If you have anything that I didn't touch on that you would like to see, please, please, please let me know in the comments down below. I'd really appreciate it. Um, let me know what you guys want to see from me. Uh, I love feedback. I love hearing from you guys. So it'd mean a lot to me um, if you would do as such. Um, now I can't, I don't think I'm missing anything. Um, so have your guy, have a safe night guys. Um, and, uh, a wonderful night or wonderful day, whatever it may be. Um, and thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to like comment and subscribe, and I will see you guys next time.